What's going on internet? Another good day to be alive. IG here again, and uh, I'm gonna just take a quick um, peek, I guess, at, um, at what the elementary project is up to these days. I'm sure most of you are aware of the existence of this project. It's been around for a little while. It has its roots in uh, sort of user interface design, user experience design. It used to be a theme and an icon pack way back in the day for Ubuntu and then it branched out to become its own thing. And now um, elementary OS Loki um, or 0.4.1, I believe is the current ish version. And um, they released quite a big update back in, I believe it was March of this year. And, um, and I've just kind of been toying with it ever since uh, just to, you know, to see what's new and that kind of thing. Elementary, the elementary project has always been one that I've admired, um, mainly because of its, uh, its, its laser focus on, um, on user experience and the user interface design. I think uh, it's one of those things where once you see good design in action, you can it, it hooks you. And, um, and in terms of, in terms of what, uh, what can attract desktop customers uh, or desktop users in the Linux world anyway, as an alternative to Windows or Mac, um, elementary OS probably has one of the strongest ethos out there in terms of uh, pursuing that excellence of, uh, of, of user experience and, and user interface. Um, and I think, you know, elementary OS Loki is, is just a, you know, refinement of that ideal, if you were. Um, so in terms of my own thoughts on this, I'm not going to sort of do a, a full on, you know, distro review, but I will say that um, there definitely are some things about this, uh, this distro that work really well. Um, and there are some things that I would, uh, there are some things that I would obviously that aren't maybe not catered to me specifically um, as a, as a not quite a power user, but somewhere in that vicinity. So it's definitely aimed at simplicity and it's got its focus there. And I think it, uh, it deserves some applause for that while at the same time realizing that a lot of people who use uh, Linux based systems are probably not the most uh, they probably don't have the most simple needs of all computer users out there. And I guess that's the, that's the balance that elementary has to, um, has to deal with here is the fact that there, um, a lot of their user base do come from other platforms or at least people that spend a lot of time in windows and Mac. Um, and as their downloads, uh, as the downloads from their page would suggest, uh, a lot of their, a lot of their customer base does come from, um, yeah, it does come from. Uh, other platforms, which is fantastic. It means elementary as a project is doing what it's set out to do. Um, but at the same time, uh, the, the, you know, the core Linux base have always found, um, or at least in my experience, have found elementary OS to be a little bit controversial in that uh, it doesn't always uh, evoke the same, um, you know, open source, uh, open source ideals or, you know, free software as in free from charge and also free software as in freedom of the software as, uh, as what other, um, as what other, you know, Linux projects have in the past. And they've been criticized for things like, um, you know, not contributing much to upstream development and all that kind of thing, and not really embracing the spirit of the open source community. And I, I kind of get that, but honestly, like different horses for diff I mean, different courses for different horses. I can't believe I almost screwed that up. Um, yeah, elementary OS, I think as a project is, is more of a flagship of what Linux could be if somebody actually took it and, and invested in the, the user experience and the user interface of it. And, uh, and also they've, they've been one of the pioneers in the open source world anyway, with trying to get past this idea that, um, that quality open source software is, um, doesn't cost anything. Uh, and I think what they're trying to work towards is attributing value towards uh, what their software is worth. So I guess um, there've been, you know, plenty of opinions said about um, the, uh, you know, about their their model for downloading the distro itself, where you can choose how much you want to donate, or of course you can put in zero dollars and download it for free. Um, and the same to be said then for their new um, for their new app store. So if we minimize this and jump over to the app center, they do have, um, they do have, of course, their different uh, apps now where uh, third party developers can add their apps to the store and they can actually get um, a simple payment system uh, that's done through Stripe, I believe. Um, and they can give suggestions of how much they would like to get for their app. But at the end of the day, you can still choose how much you want to give these people uh, or you can download it for free and then donate to them later. I think 
what Elementary is doing here in pioneering this kind of payment model for, especially for open source software for their platform, I think they're opening the doors for more quality software to be made because like I'm under no illusion that quality software does take time and time is money. And so for these developers who are, you know, talented people that they want to make quality apps, then it's only fair that there should be a quick and convenient way to support developers in their uh, in their development pursuits. And I honestly think that a model like this could really take something like Ubuntu's ecosystem and their software store to a whole new level. Uh, if they were able to sort of get on board with something like um, something like this, this pay what you want kind of uh, model because it's been really successful to, for things like the Humble Indie Bundle in the past where um, you know Linux users have kind of paid what they want to and by and large when when Linux users identify quality software they're happy to pay a little bit more for it than what you would expect in other app stores not to mention these days that honestly most uh, most people are pretty comfortable paying for software whether it be for you know iPhones iPads Android etc um, you know even the even the Windows Store now has some uh, quality sort of paid software that's exclusive to that store so the idea of having an app center like the one in elementary where people can uh, where developers can suggest how much they would like for their app but then it's left up to the user as to how much they want to pay for that app um, I think that's a really positive model and I hope that the developers that put their software here in the store uh, actually get what they deserve from it. Um, so yeah, it's one of those things where uh, if you want to, I guess, invest in a Linux platform and you want to see it succeed, then Elementary, the Elementary project is a good one to get behind um, because they want to be able to support their third-party developers uh, through their app center. So that's all I'll really, really say on that. I imagine there will be some opinions in the comments below, but I think it's a really uh, interesting alternative to a common problem, and that is that quality software does cost money to make, and where developers get that money from has always been a challenge in the past, especially for open source projects. Okay, let's move on. So um, in terms of overall sort of performance and quality of this, it is very good provided um, in elementary, provided that you kind of stick with their use case, uh, which is overall fairly locked down. And like, um, like I said, it's not really in keeping with what a lot of the open source community likes. So for example, if you're the sort of person who wants to tweak this to all, uh, to all get out and you like to have everything exactly the way that you want it, then elementary is never going to be the project for you. But if you're a, if you're a user who is, um, is not really too fussed by that, you just need something that works efficiently and works well and works reliably, then um, the Pantheon desktop environment and uh, all of the sort of the tools and the, the apps that they include are gonna get the job done just fine for you. I mean, for me, I've, what, I've installed Chrome, I've installed a few Chrome web apps, I've got the, the Google Play Music desktop player, I've got um, Simple Note here, and all of these apps combined kind of give me a, you know, more or less pretty fair experience for what I need to get out of a desktop. Um, and so, yeah, like elementary for me is um, is the ideal use case of a, of a system for me personally, uh, just because it does get out of the way. It focuses more on what you're doing rather than the system itself. And um, and that's why I watch projects like elementary and, uh, and Solus quite closely because I love what they're trying to achieve. They're trying to achieve a desktop environment that gets out of the way, that lets you, you know, work in the way that you work and, um, and doesn't, it doesn't give too much space for, I guess, ways to break the desktop. And don't get me wrong, there's always going to be a need for a tweaker's distro out there. Um, and that's why, you know, there are, there are the myriad of other Linux distributions out there. But I think, I think Elementary's focus has kind of, uh, has definitely ta taken off in terms of uh, its popularity. And I think it will continue to, to add to its popularity moving forward because people ultimately like good design. And while there are great design distributions out there like Solus and like Elementary, you can see these two are battling for 10th and 11th place for popularity on DistroWatch. Not that that's the be all and end all of, uh, of metrics, but still. They've, uh, yeah, they're, they're clearly working towards a very clear goal. And the people that identify with that goal are going to enjoy using elementary OS. So I guess those are my thoughts. They're very rambly and all over the place, but 
I think the Linux world is in an interesting place where uh, we're, we're kind of finally, finally learning that maybe forking everything and doing your own project isn't always the best answer and maybe it's best to contribute to quality projects that are already going on. And I think if the Linux world can continue to create models where developers can be supported for their software efforts um, in the in a similar vein to the way that Elementary OS handles their projects, um, the, the main project itself, and also the way that they handle transactions in their, in their app center, um, then I think this will be the, the future or it could potentially be the future for what, um, what Linux software could look like. Um, yeah, so those are my thoughts there. Um, as you can see, there's not really sort of too much to, to talk about in the system itself. Um, in terms of system settings, I did install the tweaks thing just so I could get some window controls and other bits and pieces. But by and large, it works very well. Like it works out of the box. I would love to see some more online accounts integration, but it's good to see that they're not false advertising stuff that they can't actually deliver on. Like I have seen in other desktop environments where they offer Facebook and Twitter and you know Google um, integration, but then actually offer no connection into the apps on the desktop for that to actually work but who knows we might be all past that now in terms of what we're expecting from our desktop because really most of us are just going to install Chrome and you know do most of our work in there which brings me to the working in a web browser series yes we will be back on that very soon so stay tuned for that drop a like um, and a comment um, and just let me know your thoughts on this uh, business model or on this idea of supporting uh, Linux distributions and uh, yeah and I will talk to you all in the very next video peace out ladies and gentlemen 